The Tunica people are a group of linguistically and culturally related Native American tribes in the Mississippi River Valley, which include the Tunica, also spelled Tonica, Tonica, and Thonica, the Yazoo, the Koroa, Akaroa, Kuruai, and possibly the Tew. They first encountered Europeans in 1541 of members of the Hernando de Soto expedition. The Tunica language is an isolate. Over the next centuries, under pressure from hostile neighbors, the Tunica migrated south from the central Mississippi Valley to the lower Mississippi Valley. Eventually, they moved westward and settled around present-day Marksville, Louisiana. Since the early 19th century, they have intermarried with the Biloxi tribe, an unrelated siouan speaking people from the vicinity of Biloxi, Mississippi, and shared land. Remnant peoples from other small tribes also merged with them. In 1981, they were federally recognized and now call themselves the Tunica Biloxi Indian Tribe. They have a reservation in Avoyles Parish, Louisiana. By the Middle Mississippian period, local late woodland peoples in the central Mississippi Valley had developed or adopted a full Mississippian lifestyle with intensive maize agriculture, hierarchical political structures, muscle shell tempered pottery, and participation in the Southeastern Ceremonial Complex, SECC. At this time, the settlement patterns were a mix of dispersed settlements, farmsteads, and villages. Over the next centuries, settlement patterns changed to a pattern of more centralized towns with defensive palisades and ditches indicating a state of endemic warfare had developed between local competing polities. Material culture such as pottery styles and mortuary practices began to diverge at this point. The archeological evidence suggests that the Mississippi Valley was home to several competing paramount chiefdoms with supporting vassal states, all belonging to the same overall culture. The groups in the area are defined by archeologists as archeological phases based on differentiation in these material cultures. They include the Menard, Tipton, Bell Mead Walls, Parkin, and Nodina phases. In the immediate vicinity of the future city of Memphis, Tennessee, two phases seem to have been paramount chiefdoms, Parkin and Nodina. The other phases were possible vassal states or allies in their competition for local supremacy. The Parkin phase is centered on the Parkin site, a 17 acres, 7 HA palisaded village at the confluence of the St. Francis and Tyronza rivers. The large village was likely located at the confluence of the two rivers because the site enabled residents to control transportation and trade on the waterways. The Nodena phase is believed to have been centered on the Bradley site, 3 CT7, and its nearby cluster of towns and villages. It is named for the Nodena site, located east of Wilson, Arkansas, in Mississippi County, on a meander bend of the Mississippi River. Scholars believe that because of pottery and mortuary similarities, the Bell Mead and Walls phase peoples were allies or vassals of the Nodana polity. The park and polity, defined by different mortuary practices and pottery, was competing. In the spring of 1541, Hernando de Soto and his army approached the eastern bank of the Mississippi River, coming upon the province of Quizquiz, pronounced Keys Keys. These people spoke a dialect of the Tunican language. At that time, these related groups covered a large region extending along both sides of the Mississippi River in present-day Mississippi and Arkansas. Upon crossing the river, the expedition came upon the province of Aquixo, and from there onto the province of Caski. The province had a long-standing feud with the province of Pacaja, described by its participants as having lasted for generations. The Spaniards were impressed with the peoples of this region, its many towns, abundant agriculture, and fine quality of the people. The expedition later visited the province of Kigat, the province of Caligua, and Palasma. The chief of Palasma sent the expedition onto the land of the Cayas, where they found the town of Tanico. Linguistic analysis in the 1930s by John Swanton and in the 1980s by Robert L. Rankin point to the Koroa tribe as likely to have been the Caligua. Archaeologists believe the location for the province of Caligua may be the Greenbrier phase on the White River at the edge of the Ozark Highlands. Europeans also called the settlement Tanico, which is another name later applied to the Tunica, also making its identification as a Tunican group secure. The Tanico were salt makers and salt traders, procuring the salt from the sands of a stream that fed into the river of the Cayas, later identified as the Arkansas River. 
The people would scoop the sand in baskets and run water through it, making a brine. The brine was strained and left to dry in shallow bowls where the dried salt was later scraped off. Scholars have evaluated the three surviving Soto narratives for topography, linguistics, and cultural traits, combined with the results of archeological excavations and analysis. Most archeologists and ethno-historians believe the following can be identified as equivalent sites. They are paired by archeological phase and Soto references. Menard phase equals sign Anilco, Walls phase equals sign Quizquiz, Bell Mead phase equals sign Aquixo, Parkin phase equals sign Casqui, and Nodena phase equals sign Pacaha. The description of the ongoing war between the Casqui and Pacaha matches interpretations of the archeological record, as do distances and topography mentioned in the narratives. Words recorded by the narratives at Pacaha, such as Mochila, Macanoche, and Calusa, match Tunica linguistic characteristics evaluated by Mary Haas in the 1940s. It is now theorized that the peoples of the central Mississippi Valley, from Pacaha in the north to the provinces of Anilco and Utiange in the south on the Arkansas River, were all Tunican. It was another 150 years before another European group recorded the Tunica. In 1699, when encountered by the La Source expedition, coming down river from Canada, the Tunica were a modest-sized tribe numbering only a few hundred warriors, with about 900 people in total. While the Spanish had been in their territory only for a short time, their encounter had devastating effects. The accidental introduction of Eurasian infectious diseases, such as smallpox, ravaged the native populations, who had no acquired immunity. In addition, the expedition had played off local political rivalries, causing more conflict. By the time the French arrived, the central Mississippi Valley was sparsely occupied by the Quapau, a Degiha Siouan speaking people hostile to the Tunica. In the intervening century and a half since the DeSoto expedition, the Tunica and Koroa had relocated further south to the mouth of the Yazoo River in west central Mississippi. The French established a mission among the Tunica around the year 1700 on the Yazoo River near the Mississippi River in the present day state of Mississippi. Archaeological evidence suggests that the Tunica had recently migrated to the region from eastern Arkansas in the late 17th century. Father Antoine Davion was assigned as the missionary for the Tunica, as well as for the smaller tribes of the Koroa, the Yazoo, and Cuspe, or Huspe tribes. Unlike the northern tribes with which the French were familiar, the Tunica and the nearby Tansa and Natchez had a complex religion. They had built temples, created cult images, and had a priest class. The Tunica, Tansa, and Natchez retained chiefdom characteristics such as a complex religion and, in the case of the Natchez, use and maintenance of platform mounds after they had disappeared elsewhere. Several characteristics linked the Tunica to groups encountered by DeSoto, their emphasis on agriculture, cultivation by men rather than women, as DeSoto noted when describing Quizquiz, trade, and manufacture and distribution of salt, a valuable item to both native and Europeans. The trade in salt was an ancient profession among the Tunica, as evidenced by De Soto's noting salt production when visiting the village of Tanico. Salt was extremely important in the trade between the French and the various cotton groups in northwestern Louisiana and southwestern Arkansas. Scholars believe the Tunica were middlemen in the movement of salt from the Cadden areas to the French. Angola, 1706, 1731. By the early 18th century, Chickasaw raided the Indian tribes along the lower Mississippi River to capture people for the Indian slave trade in South Carolina. They took an estimated 1,000 to 2,000 captives from the Tunica, Tansa, and Quapaw tribes during this period. By 1706, the Tunica decided to move again. With their enemies, the Natchez, to their immediate south, they decided to move further across the Mississippi and south to its confluence with the Red River, the next major river junction. This location enabled them to keep control of their salt trade as the Red River also connected to their salt source in the Catan areas. They established a loose collection of hamlets and villages at their new home in present-day Angola, Louisiana. In the early 20th century, Angola was developed as the site of the Louisiana State Penitentiary. In 1967, a corrections officer at the Louisiana State Penitentiary discovered the remains of a small hamlet at this site. 
The archaeological site is now known as the Bloodhound Site. During the 1710s and 1720s, war broke out four times between the French and the Natchez. The French called these the First Natchez War, 1716, the Second Natchez War, 1722, the Third Natchez War, 1723, and the Natchez Rebellion of 1729. The last was the most widespread war. The Natchez attacked and killed many of the French in Natchez territory. In retaliation, the French gained the Choctaw as allies, eventually defeating the Natchez people. Of those who survived, thousands were sold into slavery and sent to the Caribbean, where the French had plantations on Saint-Domingue and Guadeloupe. In November 1729, the French commander, Sieur de Chapar, ordered the Natchez to vacate one of their villages so that he could use its land for a new tobacco plantation. The chiefs of the village sent emissaries to potential allies, including the Yazoo, Koroa, Illinois, Chickasaw, and Choctaw. They also sent messages to the African slaves of nearby French plantations, inviting them to join the Natchez in rising up against the French. In November 1729, the Natchez attacked. Before the day was over, they destroyed the entire French colony at Natchez, including Fort Rosalie. Over 200 colonists, mostly French men, were killed, and more than 300 women, children, and slaves were taken captive. War continued until January 1731, when the French captured a Natchez fort on the west side of the Mississippi River. Between 75 and 250 Natchez warriors escaped and found refuge among the Chickasaw. The young great son and about 100 of his followers were captured, subsequently enslaved, and shipped to work French plantations in the Caribbean. The Natchez Rebellion expanded into a larger regional conflict with many repercussions. The Yazoo and Koroa Indians had allied with the Natchez and suffered their fate. The Tunica were initially reluctant to fight on either side. In June 1730, the head chief of the Tunica, Kahura Jolago, agreed to let a small party of Natchez refugees settle near his village, with the provision that they should do so unarmed. He received 30 Natchez warriors into his village after disarming them. A few days later, the last chief of the Natchez arrived at the Tunica village with a hundred men and an unknown number of women and children. They also concealed Chickasaw and Corot in the canebrake around the village. Kahura Joligo informed them that he could not receive them unless they gave up their arms. They replied that this was their intention, but asked if they could keep them a while longer so their women did not get the impression that their unarmed men were prisoners. He consented to their request and proceeded to distribute food to his new guests. A celebratory dance was held till after midnight when the Tunica retired to their cabins, thinking that the Natchez would do the same. The Natchez, Chickasaw, and Koroa attacked their hosts in their cabins and killed all they managed to surprise while asleep. Kahura Joligo killed four Natchez during the fighting, but was eventually killed along with 12 of his warriors. His war chief, Brides Le Boeufs, Buffalo Tamer, with a dozen of his warriors, repulsed the attack and retook the head chief's cabin. He rallied his remaining warriors and after fighting for five days and nights without interruption, regained control of the village. 20 Tunica were killed and as many wounded in the fighting. They had killed 33 Natchez warriors and took three prisoners. Later, they burned them in ritual punishment for the attack. After the attack and plundering of their village at Angola, in 1731, the Tunica moved a few miles away to the Trudeau site in West Feliciana Parish. The Tunica continued to prosper, practicing their vocation as traders and middlemen. They expanded on a relatively new business as horse traders. For at least a decade, the French had become dependent on the Tunica for supplying the valuable animals. Because of the expense of shipping horses from France, the French found it cheaper to buy them in La Louisiane from the Tunica. They acquired the horses through a native trade network, which had its origin in the Spanish colony of Mexico. The Tunica stayed at this location into the 1760s, when the French ceded control to the Spanish following the French defeat by the English in the Seven Years' War. Proof of the tribe's prosperity during these years was revealed in the 1960s when the Trudeau site was discovered and excavated. Large amounts of European trade goods, including beads, porcelain, muskets, kettles, and other items, as well as locally produced pottery in the Tunica tribal style, were buried as grave goods at the site. What has been called the Trudeau treasure, 
was the greatest amount of European trade goods found at any Native American site of this period. The tribe's warriors and their allies attacked a British flotilla that came up the Mississippi River from New Orleans on March 15, 1764, at a bend in the river at Dabian's Bluff. 